Without further ado. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ud I'm, oh, I'm, I'm very sorry. You, you know, you're right. I, uh, there was a last-minute uh, replacement, and I, I uh, totally just read the wrong bio because Tomer's <laughs> not here today. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's been a wonderful morning. Um, okay. So, in that case, Tomer had a visa problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, a lot of that going around. Uh, all right, Udi Yavo, also of Insilo, is the CTO. And, uh, you know, so obviously we got upgraded. That's, you know. <laughs> if only you could get a speaker upgrade, too, or a, a room host upgrade as well, you'd be better off. Um, so Udi also has tons of experience in cybersecurity. Uh, prior to Insilo, he spearheaded the cybersecurity unit at the National Electronic Warfare Research and Simulation Center of Rayfield Advanced Defense. If you're getting the, the, the gist, gist of this, these people have worked together for a while. Um, and uh, you know what? You don't want to listen to me talk, so let's just have him do it. Yeah. Okay, so let's start. Um, I mean, we already heard enough about that. Um, Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is injections. So we'll start with uh, user mode injections. We'll go really quickly through uh, common uh, injection techniques. Then we'll go through to uh, quickly over power loader. It's advanced in inje injection technique. And uh, we'll move on to an improved version of power loader uh, that works uh, both on 64-bit and has other features we'll talk about. Then we'll, mo we'll move on to kernel injections. Uh, I'll go over uh, common injection techniques first, uh, and then we'll go through a new injection techniques. We call it uh, trap frame injection, and uh, we'll finish with uh, coldest code injections, which I'll explain later. Okay, so let's start. So quickly, uh, through common uh, injection methods, probably the most common one is just you open some process, uh, allocate some new code into Hello, I'm Geek here. Unfortunately, video rigs seem to freeze up and no one seemed to notice until about the 20 minute, 20 second mark in. So, unfortunately, we lost some audio up until then. Sorry about that.
it's pretty well documented. Uh, and uh, the basic step to using the steps to using it is uh, just to wait on a load image notify routine, uh, which gets called each time an image is mapped into uh, the target uh, process. Uh, write the pro uh, some payload uh, into the address space. Let's say something that calls LDR load DLL to inject some DLL or load library. There are several variations to it, but the principle is pretty much the same. And then insert uh, APC using uh, K, K insert uh, uh, Q APC. Uh, uh, code for this method can be found in the internet relatively easily, so there's no need to elaborate here. Another less common method uh, was used by Duku. Uh, that's pretty why it's worth mentioning. It's also uh, well documented, but uh, I'll uh, quickly explain how it works. Uh, like the APC routine, it waits on the load image notify routine uh, for the main module to load. Uh, let's say uh, the driver is evil driver, uh, .sys. So once the uh, main image is uh, loaded, the driver maps uh, some payload into the target application. Then it replaces the entry point of the target image with a jump to the payload. And once the payload executes, it uh, restores the original bytes on the uh, main uh, image uh, entry point and jumps back to it. Uh, this is nice since uh, it um, ensures that the payload will execute before uh, the main code executed. Um, another method which is, to our knowledge, pretty much undocumented, uh, is we call it import table patching. Uh, I, I don't think it has any formal name. Uh, so it's never been used by malware, to our knowledge as well, but it is commonly used by, uh, by security vendors. Trustee, Symantec, and Microsoft app we use it. Uh, and uh, there can be uh, probably very similar uh, method that exploits uh, uh, the TLS, it's a thread local storage uh, directory of uh, the P file to achieve similar results, but I won't go through it. So this is the way it works. Uh, first, uh, you wait on the image notify routine like the other two methods, uh, allocate new import table for the main, uh, for the executable, and copy the old import table uh, with a small modification, uh, uh, just add the DLL you want to inject as the first entry of the uh, new import table. Then redirect the, the import table of the original uh, image to the, to the new one. And once the injected DLL uh, loads, it can uh, restore the, the import table. Uh, this, what's nice about this method is, let's say you are touched with uh, only or immunity debugger or anything like that to a process which is injected this way, uh, it will appear as if the, the DLL, the injected DLL was uh, originally part of the process. Uh, uh, you, won't, you won't see the, the loading part. So a uh, quick summary of these methods. Uh, this uh, method are used by both malware and security vendors. Uh, uh, all of them pretty much uh, used, uh, used to inject DLLs. Uh, and they require the, some kind of payload in user, uh, in user mode other space, maybe except for the import table uh, patching. And uh, pretty much all of them use uh, the load image notify routine. So now well, let's move on to a new method uh, we, uh, we, we developed. Uh, we call it top frame injection. So top frames uh, are created each time the uh, CPU uh, handles exceptions uh, or interrupts. Uh, basically, what it does is to save the state of uh, the user mode program on the kernel mode stack, so it will be able to restore it once the system call or exception or interrupt handling, whatever is done. Uh, the, the structure used by the kernel to all this information is a K-trap frame. Uh, it, there is a pointer to each, each thread has a pointer to to a trap frame uh, in the k thread uh, structure. 
Uh, what we see now is the, the structures, uh, the way they're defined. There's nothing really special here. The only thing important is we can see that it pretty much holds the entire state. So everything that is a, that can be, be that will be restored can be modified before uh, before it goes back uh, to goes back to user mode. Um, so in order to make trivial injection with this uh, uh, with trap frames, all we need to do is to wait on some some uh, callback some some callback routine. It could be th thread creation, registry access, file access, uh, whatever. Um, and, and once the callback is triggered, allocate uh, some payload into the target application, uh, alter the instruction pointer that was saved in the traps frame. Uh, when the when the kernel uh, goes back to user mode, uh, the payload uh, will run uh, and restores normal execution when it's done. But uh, this uh, talk is about uh, coldest code injections. So the idea was to to do it without adding any new code to the process and still be able to do complex operations. Uh, uh, for example, to send a post request from Internet Explorer, uh, open remote shell from some process, uh, and keep it something that's easy to, to write. So uh, we'll be able to do uh, complex things and without too much hassle. And the uh, main limitation is no code injection. No, we, we won't add any new code to the process. So let's see how it can be done. So instead of using a, a RIP to other the execution, uh, we'll try to mess with the user stack. So once again, uh, uh, the, the uh, let's uh, see what happens uh, in create red callback uh, and uh, use it to do something trivial. Uh, so what we can do is build some rope chain, uh, for example, to load the library, uh, then alter the stack pointer to the begin to the beginning of the to the start of the rope chain, uh, and when the and when the uh, system call will return, the rope chain will execute. Uh, but uh, as I said, we won't do it without adding new code. So loading a new library is kind of cheating. So we do it without uh, loading our own library into the process. Uh, so, but first we have a few challenges we have to, to solve in order to make the, this thing work. First, we need to be able to get return values back to kernel mode. So we are able to uh, uh, react uh, to things that happen in user space. So uh, the first solution, which I'll dive into l later, is the, to use the device handle in order to get notifications. Uh, I'll explain it in a moment. Another possibility is uh, to trigger some uh, uh, hookable events, such as registry access. Uh, wait for it to happen, then grab the return value for somewhere, and uh, fix the context. This is far. This is harder to do, and uh, we didn't uh, go that way. Uh, another issue is deadlocks because uh, we don't know the exact state of the user mode program when the callback is triggered. We can't be sure that uh, any code we inject, a uh, uh, rope chain we inject into the program, won't cause uh, some kind of deadlock. Uh, let's say. Uh, uh, load library is being called, so some lock is held right now, uh, so uh, we can't use it. Uh, so the solution to this, to this was to use the dedicated thread, and uh, we'll see how we do it la later on. Uh, we, uh, we get this dedicated thread. Uh, another issue is uh, what if we need uh, to use a user mode function that requires a callback as parameter. So. Uh, one possibility is just not to use the, this, uh, these functions. Uh, uh, we didn't need to use uh, such functions uh, from, for demos we did, and we still were able to do almost everything. Uh, uh, if we have to do it, we had to do it, we probably uh, use uh, the method I, I mentioned earlier and will trigger some something that's hookable. 
like uh, registry access, file access, or something like that, and then uh, restore the context accordingly. So now let's move on to how to use the anti-close function uh, to trigger callbacks back to our driver. So what we're going to do is to use a device object. Uh, uh, we'll create, we file create device for the driver. And whenever we require a callback, uh, we'll just create a new handle in the target process uh, and build a rope chain that will uh, eventually close that handle. Now, uh, when, once the, the handle is closed, uh, what's going to happen is that the IRP will be generated and the cleanup handler of our driver will be called. So what we can do is uh, take the, I forgot to say, uh, uh, we first save the, the value we need at some, uh, some, somewhere uh, uh, in user mode so it won't be destroyed. Uh, and, uh, and then when uh, the callback is triggered, we get, the, we get this value and uh, act according, accordingly. Uh, one thing to note is that we can't just move, uh, for example, uh, AIX register or IAX register uh, to, some, uh, to, some other register, to some other register and then get it from directly from the trap frame because it uh, might be lost when, let's say it's a 32-bit application uh, which uh, triggers some system calls. It, it won't go directly to the kernel. It first go through uh, uh, a chain, uh, uh, a 64-bit WoW64, uh, 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 and the register might be lost along the way. So now uh, we know how to get callbacks, but we still don't know how to create a dedicated thread. So let's see uh, the API for creating new threads. Uh, basically, there are two arguments we care about. The first one is the, uh, the procedure that the thread is about to execute, and the other is uh, the parameter uh, it's about to receive. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the uh, the trick we did to get uh, callbacks and we'll set uh, the create thread call uh, with uh, anti-close procedure and uh, the device handle as an argument. So what's going to happen is that uh, when the thread uh, just uh, starts to execute, uh, we'll get a callback uh, to our driver and now we'll be able to tell that we are in, a, in, a, in our own thread, it's a dedicated thread no, that, no the deadlocks are going to happen. And once we're done with the, the process, uh, we can let the, the thread die and everything will work, uh, will work well. Uh, okay, what we did next is uh, we want to write uh, this kind of programs easily. So we developed a relatively simple API. Uh, Actually, we probably could have created uh, some kind of uh, small compiler to just translate uh, uh, C, co C code to the way it should be uh, in order to execute in our driver. Uh, we didn't have time to do it, but it is possible. So uh, the first API uh, is a create program. You just tell it where uh, you want uh, this program to run, for example, Internet Explorer. Uh, then you add the uh, steps to the program, uh, for example, uh, open socket, uh, read socket, things like that. Tell it to run with a run program, and once it's running, uh, it will wait until the target process does something that we can uh, hook on and uh, build the rope chain for creating a dedicated thread and starts to run the program in the context of that, uh, that process. Uh, there are other, uh, several uh, uh, methods uh, uh, API we are using uh, to, to open a library that's already loaded in the, in the process, uh, call some uh, function, uh, load, uh, load a new library to the process. Uh, for example, uh, if it's a process that doesn't have a socket uh, uh, API loaded into it, uh, we might need to, uh, to load it. Okay, so uh, uh, this is a very 
simple program that uses the API. Uh, you know, we create a program to run an Internet Explorer. Uh, we add a new step to it, for example, to load some library and run it. And uh, the code for uh, loading some library is just do uh, load library, add it to the ROP chain, and uh, load some DLL. So what I'm going to show right now is uh, how this driver uh, actually works and uh, uh, how it uh, creates a reverse shell from a winlogon process. Okay, so we have here uh, Netcat running, uh, waiting for uh, uh, some connection. And just restore the snapshot. I didn't want to go through it uh, uh, during the presentation. So here we can see uh, Post Explorer. Uh, we're going to want to see that uh, WinLogon indeed uh, opens some process. And, uh, what we see, okay, I, I make it full screen so it will be easier. See it? I, ho I hope uh, it's uh, uh, visible. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at now is uh, uh, this is uh, already, the driver already created the, the dedicated thread here, and this is the first, uh, the first chain that it runs on the dedicated thread. I'll now single step through it. Uh, what we did is a modified version of the driver that uh, uh, we, we made uh, some kind of debugging support to it. So it injects breakpoint uh, each step step during the injection. So it's easier to uh, to walk through what's going on. Uh, when we do it uh, without uh, adding breakpoints, uh, the debugger can't even uh, single step through it. It just happened. So. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, okay. Okay. So first, uh, I'm loading a socket uh, socket library. Um, the interesting uh, part will be when we get to ZW close, which is anti close. Uh, what's gonna happen now is that the driver uh, is gonna get a get a callback because the handle is closed. And it's going to write a new ROP chain into the stack. So what's going to happen is that the stack just jumped up. And the new function is being executed. So now it's a WSA startup. We, we need to call it before uh, creating any sockets. So once again, uh, I'll go through it. Actually, I'll just let it run and see where we go. So the next step uh, is going to be creating a new socket. So the same way uh, I, we, we saw uh, in the previous uh, call, uh, the chain uh, is executed. We reach uh, the ZW close, and a new chain will be created. Now it's for connection. Uh, I let it run. Now uh, uh, the same thing will happen for create process. Uh, it's, it's just a simple reverse shell. Uh, uh, for demo purposes, but we also wrote things which are much more complex than that. Okay, so let's let it run. Okay, as we can see, uh, a new command line was created under WinLogon. And let's see what we got on the uh, netcat side. So, uh, where am I? So I'm system. And that's... Uh, and that's what uh, that's the reverse shell we got from the driver. Okay, so and let's go back here. Okay, so uh, to sum things up, um, injections are a pretty important factor for both security vendors and malware writers. Um, techniques are getting uh, uh, much uh, less generic and probably uh, more advanced and uh, actually cool. Um, the new, new techniques are constantly being invented. We'll probably see uh, new things in the future. We'll publish a source code uh, in a few days on our, uh, on our site, so you can 
go uh, and see it over there, and uh, uh, that's it. Uh, if you have anyone else, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have.